What's up, sweaties? It's Josh. Now you're watching Collider Heroes, episode 122. It's Tuesday, part of our daily heroes, which is, we just started last week. We're rocking it every day. We're having a really fun time doing it. With me, as always, is Robert Meyer Burnett. You know, I, I just can't wait. Tomorrow's Wednesday. It's Preview United Comic Con, which means... I get to see the new Hot Toys figures. That's right. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of displays. There's a lot of sweat in, inside the glass. People outside of the glass sweating more so than the inside oh of the glass. Oh, my God. It's going to be pretty impressive. I hope uh, anyone who's not making it down to San Diego Comic-Con, you'll be able to cover, uh, cover it by the Internet. There's going to be a million outlets covering news stories there. All three of us will be down there rocking different things. So definitely, if you're going to be at San Diego Comic-Con, look for us. We're going to do a special episode on Friday from San Diego Comic-Con. So it'll get up there a little bit in the afternoon. You know who else is here is Amy Dallin. Hello. That's right. It's Comic-Con week, and the crazy stuff is going to be dropping all week, and I'm so excited. Ah! Yeah, it's going to be exciting. it's going to be crazy. I mean, we're going to try to keep it together, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together. Little uh, thing from uh, Bowfinger. Um, anyway, uh, cannot wait to see the Hall H presentations on Saturday. That's going to probably take up most of my time and on Saturday. So I'm looking forward to some crazy things uh, being released. Avengers Infinity War, Microsoft, Justice League trailers, a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that I think we're all looking forward to seeing. But let's get right into the news. And some of the news that dropped over the last couple of days is about one of our favorite subjects, the Batman. So I cannot wait for them to actually start lensing this film. Matt Reeves is one of our premier directors out there right now. He just killed it with War of the Planet of the Apes. I mean, to hear that he's in control of the Batman series, that he wants to make it a noir-driven detective storyline, which is what a lot of people, like myself and a lot of other people, have been wanting to see the Batman do, is like some detective work, some legwork, some of the things that are in the comic books that have never really translated too much, as so, aside from like, you know, there were a couple scenes, and I remember the original Batman, where Bruce Wayne was actually doing some detective work, breaking down the chemicals from the Joker and like trying to figure stuff out. I mean, they, you have to have some of that time devoted to it. I at least personally feel he's human. You need to show why is he the greatest greatest detective on planet Earth. Well, not alone, outside of wearing a crazy Batman outfit, like a weird Batman outfit where he's like flying around, he looks badass, scary and dangerous. He's also incredibly smart. So what are your thoughts about Matt Reeves not doing the Ben Affleck, Jeff Johns script and doing a reboot, his own take? Amy. I think that's probably a, a good choice. Like, I mean, I, I wouldn't be upset if it had been like, I'm going to take this script and go with it. But like, that he's like, I want to do my own thing seems like a good sign. He will be more united with the material. He will be more on board with what he's doing. He will be able to make his own decisions, which hopefully he can then like, there won't be a conflict between his, like between visions for the script and the direction on the movie, which seems great. And I know they're not gonna call this movie Batman, World's Greatest Detective, but I'm gonna keep thinking of it as that uh, because I, I think that's a really wonderful angle to be taking. And hopefully this means they can also coordinate this film a little bit with what what they're doing like if the Batgirl movie's happening right. if like uh, everything else that's in progress that he can not necessarily bend to it but take it into account as he plans for this so I think this is a good thing uh, assuming there's time to do this right definitely Robert well I, I completely agree because look I like Bruce Wayne I like seeing to me Batman is always kind of like when when Bruce Wayne goes on an away team mission, to put in Star Trek terms, <laughs> that's when he dons his suit. Right. But a lot of the work that Batman has to do, the legwork, is is on the ground, out in the world, as his Bruce Wayne persona. Right. Because he can get anywhere he needs to be. It's just, just because he's wearing a costume doesn't mean he's not Batman. Right. Uh, I, I think what he's driven by, you know, the, the loss of his parents, and he uses a bat when he's going to confront criminals directly. You know, when he's going to go out, it's his, it's, it's, it's when he goes to war, he becomes Batman. Mm -hmm. But half the time, he's an intelligence officer. Yeah. And I love the idea that there's a James Bondian, Sherlock Holmesian Batman movie to be made where we're going to see a lot of legwork happening and a lot of, like, I love when characters get into situations where, Batman's going to find himself in a bad situation without the bat suit on, without his utility belt. Right. How's he going to get out of it? You know, and I, like I always said, I want to see a Diana Prince, Bruce Wayne traveling the world heart to heart style movie. So I'm delighted by this news. And I think that Matt Reeves is an auteurist director. And of course, he is going to have some control over that script. Yeah, I think these decisions were made many, many, many months ago when he signed on the dotted line. He's like, look, if I'm going to take over the Batman and I'm not just doing a one off, I'm doing a trilogy 
which is what I'm reading into it. It's like he's got a storyline. He's got a way that he wants to tell the story. He's been a Batman fan his entire life, just like a lot of us, but he's getting the chance to do the Batman that he wants to tell. So I think jumping into the script that Chris Terrio, Jeff Johns, and Ben Affleck were working on that already had some issues that we kept hearing back and forth going on, I think it just makes the most sense. My wonder about this, though, let me ask it and throw it out to you guys. You know, a lot of people are like, well, Ben Affleck, he's not directing it. Now he's not writing it. The next one off the block is now he's not Batman anymore. Now, a lot of people are like, stop saying that. We know he's going to be ben- he's- We know he's going to be Batman. We know he's going to be Batman. None of us know that he's going to be Batman until he's not Batman. Up until when they finally announce that he's not Batman, he's going to be Batman. But what my feeling about this is Matt Reeves is going to write a Batman story that takes place in Batman's earlier career. I think it can still take place in the DC cinematic expanded universe, whatever it's called, the DCU. Um, but it can be about the early Batman, the, the year one, so to speak, of Batman. I mean, we got so much of that beautifully done by Christopher Nolan in Batman Begins. And then The Dark Knight was, I think, one of the greatest Batman films ever made. And we saw a lot of detective work with his, with his character and Morgan Fr- uh, Freeman's character. I feel like this newer version of the Batman I want to see them go back. I want to see the development of the Batman, maybe Batman year one, but told in a fresh new way with some of the characters, some of the rogues gallery reintroduced in a brand new way. I I personally would like to see that. That way they can can pretty much sidestep any of these issues of who's going to be Batman or why, you know, where does it fall in the DC cinematic universe? Would I like to see Ben Affleck still continue to play Batman? Most definitely. I don't know if that's going to happen. I just feel like the way, the way I've been, uh, you know, Uh, getting certain information as it feels like maybe not but you know if it happens that way most definitely i'm completely excited either way but i gotta say having matt reeves on board having a fresh take and having particularly his take makes me really happy what are your thoughts about will ben affleck still play the batman what do you think amy Mm. it would it would really surprise me if they go that route and and recast him with someone to play a flashback batman but I'm I'm torn. I'm processing this. Like it might either solve or exacerbate some of the problems I keep trying not to think about in terms of my personal take on the DCEU right now, mm-hmm. uh, and the fact that like whatever Batman we look at, I am supposed to believe either has already or is going to kind of start going over the edge and torturing criminals. And I'm not thrilled about that uh, being like fixed in the timeline of my new Batman. Right. Uh, but I'm like. I, I will get back to you on whether I think it'll be better or worse if we have the like idealistic younger Batman or another like post getting it back together Batman. I don't know. Robert? I think it's really going to depend on how Justice League does. I mean, if Justice League is a billion dollar hit and, and everyone loves Ben Affleck playing Batman, but you know, Ben Affleck is in his 40s now. Right. And even he said it's, it's a slog playing that character because unlike Tony Stark, who's wearing a suit of armor, Batman is, even though. Yes, there's a armor esque element to the Batman outfit. You still have to be in tip top shape. I mean, Christian Bale was ripped. Everybody who's played Batman has been ripped. Well, with the exception of Adam West, perhaps. Right. But it was a different time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I do think, it, it, again, an actor just wants to play a great part. And if Matt Reeves comes up with a script that is irresistible for Ben Affleck to play, he right. probably will play it. And Ben Affleck, look, he's got a lot of goodwill. Everyone likes his Batman. Why not? I mean, he's got kids. Kids yeah. got to eat. Well, look, I I look at it like I think he's one of the best Batmans that we've had, and he's only played it like for like a few minutes at a time in different other people's films. So I'm really looking forward to seeing Ben Affleck portray both Bruce Wayne and the Batman in a Batman standalone film. I'd like to still see that happen. I hope it does. Uh, what are your guys' San Diego Comic Con expectations? Here it comes, the big daddy of all Comic Cons, the mecca, as you will, the nerd mecca where we all come congregate and float around in a giant sweat pit called the Convention Center in San Diego. Once you're in, you cannot come out until <laughs> Sunday. Uh, but Amy, what is it, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to? Okay, well, obviously, I cannot wait to absorb all of the, like, the, anything Avengers, anything Justice League that comes out of this. I'm really excited. For me, personally, the highlight of San Diego every single year is going to the Eisner Awards, Mm. um, which, public service announcement, if you have a badge to San Diego, you can go to the Eisners. 
Nobody knows this, and the room is never full, and that is a travesty. Uh, you can go to the Eisner's, which are the premier awards in comics that honor the best work, or at least a bunch of the most interesting work that was done last year in comics. Uh, and if you are not able to go, just look at that list of winners, and you've got yourself a, an amazing to-read list. Oh, my God, yeah. So that's, that's mine. I love that you said the Eisner Awards, because that is really, literally, like, you can find out about comics that you didn't even know existed, because they're all voted on by comic book peers, by mm. all the people peers in the industry they're like out of all the comics that came out this year this is the one that i think is the greatest so it literally is the oscars of comics and i think the eisner awards have done incredible jobs in the past honoring those you know artists and writers who've done incredible work so definitely keep your eyes open for are that you, list are you pulling for anyone specific who, who would you like to see win an eisner this year do you know uh i would be murdered by my dear and talented friend jody hauser if i did not point out that jody hauser is nominated for uh, an uh, an eisner for her run on Faith, uh, so I'm I'm like I want everyone to win, but especially Jody. Well, I mean, you know, Jody Hauser's had a great year this year. I met her like a, maybe last year at House of she's Secrets. She's just freaking rad, and I yeah, love watching a, her take over a, comics. She's it's a great. super nerd, and then now she's writing like I actually like Mother Panic. Yes, I think that's really fun. So I think you know she's writing a bunch of different comics. I think her writing is really fresh and fun. So yeah. I mean, I'm 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 rooting for her as well as a whole bunch of other artists. How about you, Robert? I you know what I I hate to say it, I don't know who's nominated this year. So uh, that's one of the things I love about Comic-Con is I do go and then, oh, who's nominated for the Eisner? Well, what are you looking forward and, to? Yeah. Oh, what am I looking forward to? Well, you know what? To be honest, uh, being that I'm a Star Trek sweaty, there is a dis Star Trek Discovery panel. Mm -hmm. mm. And, you know, despite what anybody says, it's new Star Trek. I always get excited about new Star Trek. I can't not get excited about new Star Trek. And I also have to say I'm a little, like D23 kind of took the sails out of the Marvel panel because we talked early on about how exciting those Marvel panels right. are. I can't wait to see the Marvel panel. Um, but also, I can't, I can't wait to see uh, what DC, what the Warner Brothers panel is yep. going to be. I mean, I'm looking forward to Justice League. I, I can't, they're probably going to make more announcements. I'm sure they're going to oh, announce. Yeah. I, I'm hoping there's an Aquaman teaser right. that's going to come out. I mean, I'm looking forward to that. But you know what I really like about Comic-Con is just randomly running into people that I don't see. And you you run into, first of all, I love running into fans, so stop me all the time. You know, if you're a Russian hotbot, even more so. That's when I love to see you. <laughs> uh, but I love just running into fans. They stop you and they talk to you. And I have the weirdest, nerdiest, sweatiest conversations that I never get tired of. People usually always have to, like, drag me away. I'm like, no, 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 I have one more point to make. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's it's great. The wire, I love the Wired Cafe. Yep. You know, that was, that, I love just hanging out there all day. Doing nothing except just the the, the the cacophony of sound and then the c sure. conversations and the people that roll through the Wired Cafe. I love it. Um, but I just, it's the people that make the convention for me. That's right. And don't forget about your Hot Toys booth, man. Oh my God. The Hot Toys booth. I can't, I cannot wait. But then they always tease you. They like, they show you the six scale 66 Batmobile and then they never make it. Oh. Uh. But you know what I'm hoping to see there? The Hulkbuster. I want to see it finished. Right. They've delayed it. I want to see the prototype. I want to get sweaty all over it. I, may, I might pull a heist. I Dude, pull a heist. I, I guess in this Avengers Infinity War trailer, they show the Hulkbuster, so somebody's wearing a Hulkbuster fighting somebody. So I guess we'll find out. You know, I'm looking forward to these big panels, the Hall H panel with Warner Brothers. I'm really looking forward to seeing this new version of the Justice League, the new trailer. I would love to see something from Aquaman, and I would love for them to pop the stakes down once again and say, look, we only got Aquaman's only DC movie that's coming out in 2018, but I want to see what's coming out in 2019, yeah. 20, 21, 22. A little clarity on that evolving schedule would not go amiss. Uh, not just a little, a lot of. <laughs> I think a lot of clarity has to be done, and the place to do it is at San Diego Comic-Con. Do you now, think new Flash director announcement? I think not only new Flash director announcement, I think the day that the Flash is going to come out is going to get staked. I think they're yeah. going to put the stakes down for Batgirl, I think they're going to put the stakes down for Suicide Squad 2. And speaking of Suicide Squad 2, let's get into... Now, they're talking about Suicide Squad 2. Now, that movie made a ton of money. Say what you will about the film. I actually enjoyed the film when it came out. Watching it a couple times later, didn't enjoy it as much. So I had a very big, you know, positive re review for it when it first came out. And then some of that luster didn't last the second screening. So I understand like sometimes that happens with films. Like you're like, man, I can't believe it was, it was really fun, but I didn't really like the ending. And then you see it again, you're like, yeah, I really definitely didn't like the ending and it affected some of the rest of the viewing. 
But I, I thought it was a good foot forward for something like the Suicide Squad, which I really didn't have that many expectations for when it was first announced, but then saw an incredible trailer at Comic-Con that was like the sneak peek, like kind of the released one. Obviously, they tampered with it and changed a lot of things. But now we've got rumors that Huame Kalatsera is possibly going to be directing it. Good choice. Um, it's supposedly going to start shooting this March, March 2018. That's right around the corner. That's like six, seven months away. Now, what are your guys' thoughts about Suicide Squad 2? What are your expectations, Amy? Who is writing this? Do we know yet? We do not know. All right. I, uh... But it's good to be wanting to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm always going to be interested in things. Uh, I'm not mad that we might have some change-ups behind the scenes on this. Right. Uh, there were things that I liked in the first movie and other things that didn't work for me. Uh, so I'm just going to go with cautiously optimistic right. uh, and, and hope that they really get that script together. Robert? Well, you know what I want to see? I, look, to me, if you're going to make a movie like this, look at like an epic Bond film like The Spy Who Loved Me right. as a template. Some guy, some megalomaniac wants to blow up the world and start an undersea kingdom and breed Aryan people. And the Suicide Squad has to go f for him and his henchmen. I mean, and, and make it make it some global domination. I don't need some mystical... Right. Why would the Suicide Squad be qualified to go after some mystical element? Bring it back to the right. Men on a Mission movie. It's where eagles dare with superheroes or supervillains. Completely it's agree. Dirty Dozen. That's what I want to see. I want to see a down and dirty, but epic, world-destroying megalomaniac. And these guys have to go after him and bring him down. See, I'll just take it down a notch. I don't even need world destroying, like the Enchantress, kind of like weird bubble in the sky kind of stuff. I don't need that. And I also don't need some guys like, haha, mustache twirling, like, and then the world will be mine. I'm like, I just want the Suicide Squad on a mission to fight the even badder guys. Like, it's right. bad guys fighting right. badder guys. Right. That's what I expected in the first film. That's why I thought, oh, the Joker should be the villain. That makes perfect sense. Wait a minute, let's add this magic, you know, Enchantress character kind of ruin the film when you really think about it it's like look make the suicide squad work by having the suicide squad do what they're supposed to do be badass bad guys fighting badder guys so that's all i want out of the suicide squad too but i'll be honest with you what i'm expecting from warner brothers is the announcement of man of steel 2 and wonder woman 2 and the batman because those are the those are the dc comic properties that i actually care about I thought Wonder Woman was incredible, and I love Man of Steel. I can't wait for a Batman film to actually happen. We keep getting all these side movie characters, like, you know, we're getting a second Suicide Squad before we get a Man of Steel 2. That makes no sense to me. So please fix that immediately. Is well, Wonder, could, Woman has, hope. Wonder Woman's become Warner Brothers' third highest grossing domestic it's their third. It's their third highest grossing domestic film behind Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. Right. So it it outgrows it past Harry Potter eight. Wow. So Wonder Woman is doing quite well. By the way, one of the things at Comic Con I do want to see is the. Right. I want to get somehow get onto the IMDb yacht. Oh right. The IMDb, the Internet Movie Database, has a yacht behind the convention center, and Kevin Smith is interviewing celebrities there. Oh yeah. And if you like tweet or hashtag IMDb yacht or boat or something, right? And they pick you, you could be anointed. Well, I have a pretty good IMDb page. I think I should be on the IMDb yacht. Somebody should have me there. So if any of you know how to get on the IMDb yacht, I want to get on it. All right. Well, we'll try to figure it out. Tweet me. I'll tweet at Kevin Smith. And guess what? I, I've heard that it's really hard to get on that yacht. I'll just say that. So, if we maybe if all of us show up in unit, you know, like, hey, the heroes are all here, we we'll still won't get on the yacht. But I have an, <laughs> you have an, we all have IMDb pages. Yes. Um, check I, out our, check out our IMDb page. You know what else? I my want brain you to is check just out. still going something something Wonder Woman something something Wonder right. Woman. Like, and that's my plea for DC. As we're discussing all of your movies, all your upcoming stuff, pay attention to the lessons of Wonder Woman. Whatever decisions were made, like that led to that working. Listen to those instincts when you're making these decisions. It wasn't cynical. It wasn't edgy. It was exactly what it should have been that served the character and that story, and we're, he we're throwing money at you as a result. So please just bear that in mind. Definitely. And it had legs. The staying power of that movie, it's been playing and making more money than yeah. any other superhero film since 2002. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's working its way up every week to be one of the biggest uh, DC superhero films to ever come out so um 
I'm going to wrap up the episode right now and say thank you for watching episode 122 of Collider Heroes. It's, you know, doing these daily shows is a, is a real a lot of fun, and I'm glad I've got my teammates here. Amy, where can people find you online? You can find me at EnthusiAmy. Uh, and, yeah, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Robert Meyer Burnett, where can people find uh, you? Again, you can find me on Twitter at Burnett RM, on Instagram at RM Burnett, or on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett, but send me a message so I know you're not a hotbot. That's right. A Russian hotbot waiting for you. and yeah, could be dangerous. A lot of explosions. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. And Twitter, just at John Schnepp. You can find me at San Diego Comic Con. I'm at booth 3917. And definitely look for us. We'll be wandering around, like probably like glazed out, like we just saw some cool stuff. So you might want to <laughs> ask us, what did we see? I'll see you guys tomorrow, episode 123. It's the comic book day. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.